Hello. Thank you. I'm gonna actually try to build a keyboard today. Unlike last time. Hopefully no technical problems today. So, let's switch over here. Well, it's dusty in here since the last time. Okay. I did a few things between the last stream and this one just to sort of get ready for this. And because some of this will take a long, some of it took a long time. Um, the one thing was making the Holy Panda switches, which were a pain because of the, um, the Panda switch housings. Are a mess in here. Can't find. Okay, so just sort of show off what I had to go through to make this switch. This hybrid switch was a real pain in my ass. So last time I was talking about these Holy Panda switches, which are uh, the um, Halo Clear stem. Inside, turn off that. Inside the um, panda uh, enclosure, whatever. So this was the panda switch here, um, and this was the Halo Clear, and the Halo Clear has a different type of um, top piece here that does not work with my switch removing tools, switch top removing tools. And uh, unfortunately the Panda switch is supposed to work with those tools. You can see it has the like, the correct two slotted hole there for it, but it's narrower on this switch than almost every other switch I've seen. So when I try to fit my tool in here, um, it doesn't actually fit. I can't get it in the hole, so I can't I can't really grab it to open it. So at first I was really nervous because I was like, how am I gonna do this 62 times or 60 times or whatever to make these switches? But I found two tricks that made this go pretty quickly. So one was, um, let me move this over a little bit. One was that I, instead of going um, in through the top holes like this and popping the switch out, I actually just turned the switch upside down and went under the two plastic tabs like that. Uh, and that worked pretty well. I was able to pop both off pretty easily. Now, the downside is I didn't lube these switches because I don't have thin lube currently. It's on its way to me. So I'm going to have to remove switch tops after I make this board. And in that case, I think I'm gonna have to make like the binder clip hack tool for this so I can narrow the edge a little bit, or I'm gonna have to try to grind off the edges of my switch top mechanicalkeyboard.com one. Um, and then for this one, let me move this out of the way. This one was a real pain in the ass because this, there just isn't a good tool for. So on this one, what I did, oh boy, that needs some white balance work. Good Lord, I look orange and pink, sorry. Um, what, for this one, what I did is I just took like a, I don't know what even what, remember what these are called, like a pry basically. And I just stuck it under the edge there like that. And then, popped that side off and then turned it, did the same thing on that side. So it actually wasn't that bad. And these ones I don't care about. These are not gonna be used, the housings of these. So I was less worried about damaging those. Um, I guess same goes with the panda switches. I don't plan to use the pandas as they were. So anyway, uh, it only took, I don't know, hour to make a full complement of them for this board, which I did. Um, so I've got, I made, I made actually a few extras just in case. Um, and actually I have, I don't know, like five more here or six more here. Um, so I made a whole thing so I could put it in this, uh, this lubing station acrylic board here so I could test it. So I was able to actually get a feel for the whole, how this would feel when typing. Cause I was a little concerned. Um, I was concerned when 
I did the very first switch that this was too harsh, that I wasn't gonna like the way this felt. And after doing the whole thing, it's still just as harsh as I thought, but the more that I sat and sort of screwed with, screwed with pseudo typing on it, actually started to like it a little bit. It's, it, it def, there definitely needs to be a little bit of thin lube here because there, it's a little scratchy in one spot um, and doesn't bounce back quite as, as well as I would want, but that's what I've heard about this in general, was it doesn't bounce as well. Hello. Uh, thank you. And um, so I think I'm going to go ahead and make this board with these switches. And then I'll have to go through the fun of switch top removal and lubing them after the fact. But for now, I think I'm going to do it. So I really like this little lubing station thing because it's great for this exact purpose, just throwing a bunch of switches in and sort of getting a feel for how it would feel. And also reconfirming that I can never be an ortholinear keyboard person because uh, I just, I don't know. It would take me a long time to get used to it. I guess I you could adapt to anything over time, but it's very difficult to type on this. Um, put that mouse or the microphone right in front of the camera there. Okay, so switches are good. Uh, I did a little bit of work on the case too. Uh, one of my concerns with this case, because it's really big and heavy and aluminum, is it has this uh, recessed area here. So what I did was I popped off the thing and I cut some craft foam. You know what, bear with me. I'm gonna try to move this microphone a little closer to my face because I can hear it sounds pretty echoey. I'll try to get a little lower so it's actually facing me and hopefully not in the shot too much. That, that should work. Um, so I cut some craft foam, uh, which is just, you know, uh, you could get this. I, I bought this from Amazon, but you can buy it um, in, in a craft store, I suppose. This microphone's being a pain in my ass. Let's go a little higher microphone. Sorry. Let's try that. So casting a direct shadow there. I'm working in a very... <laughs> small region of my desk here with these lights trying to make it so that they don't cast insane shadows but i'm not entirely succeeding Let's see if that's a little better that's actually kind of worse it's all learning process here there's lights everywhere in here it's like a goofy little tv studio um anyway so there's this recess in this plate here and i was afraid this would make a bit of a pinging um sound so i cut craft foam to fit in these spots and this one required two because it's pretty deep. And then I cut this guy here and just sort of jammed it on the holes to fill in the space that the PCB will be over. So I can't fill this back region because otherwise it kills the underglow on the board, which would be sort of silly. So I tested that, I plugged that in, I tested it, I put the PCB against it, put the top plate on to make sure it still glowed without issue and it was good. And then I did the whole, I know craft foam against an LED is not gonna be a fire hazard, but still what if it is and let it sit for like three hours on and then pulled it off and touched the craft foam to make sure I didn't like melt the craft foam. And it didn't because those LEDs don't get warm at all. Um, so the bottom set of LEDs here will be completely dead because they'll be up against this. They're, they're basically the equivalent of turned off. And later, depending on how QMK has progressed in its LED support, I may just turn them off directly on the PCB firmware, but in the past I've had trouble controlling unique PCB or unique LEDs. So I may just uh, leave them on. It doesn't matter either way because they actually don't, they wouldn't have been visible because the way the top case is, the front half glow is not visible anyway. So it doesn't actually impact anything. So I put the foam in there to try to dampen the sound a little bit. So that, that guy's ready. Um, and again, I just got that craft foam from Amazon, but you could probably get it in a in any store that sells crafting supplies. Um, I'm just lazy. And then I did the other thing that I've started. That I started doing a couple of builds back, uh, which is I band-aided the areas on the PCB that the stabilizers are going to go in. Um, and this uh, is super easy to do. You have to use obviously you have to use a fabric band-aid to do this. It has to be one of the soft ones. And you just cut them to fit the size of the footprint of the um, stabilizer. And then you put them on the board in those spots. Some people put lube on the 
um, stabilizer pads as well. Um, <laughs> interesting. The uh, song that's playing in the background has my cell phone ringer in it, so I thought that was my phone, but it's not. Um, so you put these in all the spots, the stabilizer's gonna go. Obviously there's, you know, quite a few. There's uh, backspace, return, the seven U space, and the left shift. The right shift on this board's not gonna need stabilizers because it's a 1.75. So it's, it's small enough that it doesn't require stabilizers. So I did that. And the reason I did that is because I don't like the sound of a stabilizer hitting the PCB. And so when you, uh, when the stabilizer comes out, Wait, this close-up is, the color in this close-up is real gross. Um, so when the stabilizer, uh, I have these, <laughs> this test stabilizer in backward, so I can actually show you, which is genius. And also a problem I have continuously, even when I'm trying to make a board correctly, I constantly put the stabilizer in backward um, and then have to redo it, which is great. So, okay. I feel like I have two, my thumbs are too big for this kind of work. It's always a problem for me. Like I have just meaty thumbs that are not great for fine, fine actions. Okay. Oh, I did have it in the right way. I was looking at it backward. Um, so when you, you know, the stabilizer goes up and down with the key and every time it goes down, that plastic piece is gonna tap the, sta the, the PCB. And it looks like this. Right? So this, there's that damn cell phone ringer again. So this piece, this square flat piece is gonna, you know, it's gonna hit this. And if you can hear this, you know, it's it's not the worst, but when you have, especially the space bar, you have two of them hitting and you hit space far more than you would think when typing. So you're constantly hitting that space bar and the space bar is so big and it creates such a hollow of sound under the key, uh, the cap, and those that tapping sound combined with that hollow, um, combined with the switch sound itself, like you end up just getting this kind of sounds, it's just not a very nice sound. And so it sounds a little bit kind of like what this sounds like currently, this guy. Yeah, it's just that's not a very great, it's not a very good sound. Um, now, depending on the switch, it may not matter as much. So like in the case of a, a clicky switch, you know, this, this keyboard's got the, the box, um, let's switch back to here. This keyboard's got the box whites, which are clicky. So they would make a click sound. So in this case, you know, maybe you wouldn't hear the stabilizer anyway, but I did band-aid this and there was a difference and, um, then I have some boards that I did not band-aid, like this one I did not band-aid in the past, and it, it's got a, a harsher, you know, snapping sound. Um, so anyway, I just prefer it. I, I don't know, I would have to do some, you know, I'd have to actually like directly compare the sounds of the exact same board, the exact same caps, the exact same case with and without them. But it's so easy to do that I just did it. And I usually do now. So anyway, the band-aids go on the board, on the PCB. And then the other thing is, so these are um, Zeal PC uh, screw and stabilizers. So they're pre-clipped. But uh, if you weren't, if I wasn't using those, I would clip them. The way stabilizers are designed, um, they have, uh, is this, is this? Mm. Boy, the close-up situation, I'll continue to try to find a good way to like determine the best way to get to determine focus here. So stabilizers, I figure these are clear too. So it's, you're just basically seeing close-ups of my nails, which no, no human should have to look at close-ups of other humans nails. Um, stabilizers have normally, let's see if I can point to it, normally would have like an extra little foot right there that sticks out. And it's just this flimsy little piece of plastic. And what it ends up doing is it gets caught. It, it doesn't get caught, but it, it it can drag and it just creates a kind of a mushy feeling. So most people clip those little extra feet off. Um, the nice thing is Zeal is a perfectionist anyway. So he clips them as part of the process. So they come clipped, which is great. And so all we're gonna do is lube them a little bit, um, which is the easier thing. 
clipping is kind of a pain because the little pieces of plastic fly everywhere and you gotta pick them up. So I have, this is also a ZOPC thick lube. I like, I prefer the thick lube on the stabilizer, stabilizers, but I think for this keyboard, for the switches, I'll do thin lube. Um, so just have this, you know, little, little uh, guy here, a little tip. And uh, for the stabilizers, I'm never like super concerned about the amount of lube because any is helpful. Um, so I just do the sides of the of the inner piece, which is that side and this side, and not like it shouldn't be like you know. Giant. I've seen people do videos, uh, lubing videos, where they leave like literal blobs all over the sides, and that seems gross because that's just gonna get gunky in your board. Um, in fact, I don't actually. She don't really like this way of app, of applying it. I prefer usually using like a little brush, which I just couldn't find this morning for some reason. So I'm gonna have to. This this little applicator I find a little bit hard to not go nuts, and I don't want it to be overflowing. Um, I just wanted to have some lubrication so that when it slides against the outer piece. It's lubricated. It's basically it. That's all you're looking for. You don't have to like. There's this awful video of, uh, of a guy showing how to lube, um, and then it helps. Oh, hey, look at that. These revision eights make it so you can't put the legs in back or the the inner piece in backward. That's awesome. That used to be a big problem. Like I was saying, like I would always accidentally put the piece in backward. The the outer design of it. It would be impossible to show, but there's actually like a, a design to the inside of the of the stabilizer now where you can't put the inner piece in backward. That's super cool. Um, okay, so inner piece on both sides. And then I usually do in the spot that the wire is gonna go, just put a little bit there. And then put the wire in, which goes in here and then in snaps in. And then confirm it goes the right way, which it does. So that's a big problem. Um, and then once it's in, I, I usually just put a little on the wire itself, just to keep it. This, and this, again, this, I know lots of people don't even lubricate stabilizers at all. That's it. So I start to do that on the other side. And ever since I started using screw-in stabilizers, I can't imagine using non-screw-in style because the there's all that also eliminates a ton of wiggle and sound just by having them like firmly attached to the board in a way that they cannot move like that dude i'm so excited about this design change so that i can't screw this up that's awesome if someone were to look at my deliveries tracker right now the only thing in there says lube i think people might take the wrong impression from that All right, so that's that's basically it. The, lubing stabilizers is the easy one. Lubing switches sucks. So there's only like four stabilizers. There's 60 plus switches depending on your board, and that is not fun. Usually lubing switches is something I do like from 10 to midnight, sitting on the couch, like watching reruns of Frasier, reruns, I don't know why I said reruns, like it's on TV still, um, re watching Netflix stuff, and I just sit there and usually pop the, um, what the hell? Okay, that's that's not how screwdrivers work. Oh, I know why I did this, so I could sit during meetings and go. Yeah, great. Okay, so, screw and stabilizers, super cool. And these ones are gold, which, you know, that's neat. I don't know if there's really a benefit other than maybe corrosion protection. I don't know if these keyboards last long enough to become corroded anyway, so I don't know if that matters. They look nice. So stabilizers also, sorry, I'm gonna take that out of my mouth. Also with Invisalign, it's really weird to have something in your teeth. That becomes like a normal habit as a, as a human is that you constantly just put something in your teeth, like hold a pencil, hold a pen, hold something, and then it's weird once you have Invisalign in there and it's actually hard to hold it. Um, so these always go in the way I don't expect, which is the side I think that goes into the big side goes into the small side and then I drop it. Uh, so let's put that in there. And this is the only thing you can't forget to do before making a keyboard. 
If you're using PCB-based stabilizers and you don't put the stabilizers in before you solder, you're screwed. You gotta take everything apart because you cannot, cannot go back on this one because uh, they're under the plate. So I have, um, sadly I have done that before or I forgot about that. It was my second build, which makes it even worse. And thankfully it was a plank build, so it only had one stabilizer. Um, and I realized only about 10 switches in, but still I had to desolder 10 switches and start again. Uh, Brian asks, have you tried any low profile mechanical keyboard designs? Um, low profile as in uh, like small case or as in uh, like the switches that like the newest plank is gonna ship with. Generally speaking, I prefer the um, case to be like at least five degrees. I don't like typing on flat anymore. I used to type on flat because like all of Apple's keyboards obviously are flat. And then once I switched to the slight angle, I, it's weird to go back. Um, i trying to think. I think of everything I have on my walls, the Centrax 60 that I put in the um, wooden case is probably the closest to low prof profile because it's a very minor um, it's a very minor, uh, angle. Okay. So those are in. So you can hear, yeah, it's pretty quiet. It's pretty quiet. Um, and then what I usually do is just in case I will, when I start to solder the, um, switches, I'll start with the ones that have, uh, stabilizers on them so that I make sure there, there isn't something wrong. Yes, I have definitely, uh, I have definitely noticed that the, I do, I can type faster sometimes on like the Apple, uh, the current key, not so much the current keyboards of theirs because of the, they hurt my fingers to type on. So I tend to type a little slower than newest ones, but the previous model, their um, dome or butterfly switches, I should say, I did type pretty fast on. So I think that it's weird. In the mechanical keyboard community, a lot of times what happens is people will uh, talk about how they built a, or they bought a poker or they built a keyboard and they feel like they type slower on it and they type faster on the Apple keyboard or whatever their laptop keyboard. And then people will go like, oh, you're an idiot. That can't be true. Those keyboards suck. But the reality is like, I don't know, the previous Apple keyboard I thought was really great to type on, um, and I did not have problems typing quickly on it, and there is no shame in typing faster on an, on that type of keyboard. Um, the thing for me about switching to mechanical was a, it wasn't quite as much about speed, because I feel like I type, honestly, I feel like I type fast enough in general um, to do work, and, and I never feel like typing speed is my problem especially like writing Swift or writing Objective-C, like I, typing any faster is not gonna help me with like the mental work that I have to do to do my work. So speed is not really an issue. Uh, it's, it was more comfort over time. Like I just, I have less soreness in my fingers and less soreness in my wrists and my right elbow when using customs because I can control a lot of the, uh, you know, actuation and angle and um, spring weights and all that goofy stuff. Um, but there's also, I think, at least for me, there is a lot of, uh, there's a lot of, um, I don't know what the, I'm trying to think of how to describe it. It's almost like a placebo effect, I think, honestly. Because you spend a lot of money and a lot of time building a keyboard, then of course you want to use it. So you're like, of course this keyboard's better to type on. Why wouldn't it be? But yeah, I definitely have opened my, uh, like an old Apple laptop and gone like, oh yeah, I type real fast on this. This isn't a problem at all. Um, and it has arrow keys, so oh, maybe I should use this, definitely. So I, I would say there are keyboard, um, there are definitely profiles of case that will get you lower. Like a lot of cases, uh, until I feel like until recently, but I'm probably wrong. I feel like until recently, the not every case was hard built with that much of a, um, angle that it is now. Like now it's common five and eight degree angles and stuff. And even some that are very severe. It used to be pretty common to have, uh, you know, feet on the back of the case that you could remove. And so you could make it a flat keyboard if you wanted. And the other thing is a lot of, uh, a lot of it will come down also to the switch types that you use or the keycaps you use, sorry. Um, because 
you know, if you're gonna D if you're gonna type on DSA, which is like, oops, which is a super flat uh, key cap. This, um, it's a super flat cap. You're gonna be typing with less finger travel vertically between the keys. Um, and then, you know, that goes all the way up to the opposite direction, like SA, which it is often profiled um, in a way where there's sculpted profile, um, where it's just non-uniform. So the bottom keys are more angled toward you and the top keys are more angled toward you and the middle keys are not. A lot of people don't like typing on SA. Um, and a lot of people think SA is only for looks, um, which I totally get because a lot of the coolest looking um, at least to me, the coolest looking sets were SA sets. But SA is also ABS plastic, which shines real quickly. Like you get you by using your caps regularly with even light use, you'll kind of wear the surfaces off. Um, but they're pretty. And I personally really enjoy typing on them. So I've, I've been using um, SA caps a lot. And, uh, you know, every time I post something to Reddit, or whatever people always there's always at least a few people who say like oh another you know another person who's using essay only for the pictures and they don't i don't think they believe that like i just i enjoy typing on them um i like the feel of it especially combined with clicky switches or tactile switches they just feel like an old mechanical keyboard to me in a way that i enjoy but that being said i also the other half of the time i usually type on gm case uh caps and GMK caps are more what you would think of as a typical, um, a typical switch, like in the shape of them, kind of what you would think of as uh, typical from you know keyboards of the 80s and 90s and early 2000s. Or, yeah, because now we've sort of moved everything's in chiclet keys now. Apple sort of pushed everyone in that direction at some point. Um, so, for instance, this guy, you know, that I I've been typing on every day now for like three months or whatever. This this is SA. This is um, uniform SA. So if I show it like this, you can see all the keys are, I don't know which way I'm going. Here we go. Uh, all the keys are the same height. So it's uniform row three, I believe. And also people who like SA tend to hate uniform. Uh, people like the, the sculpted look of SA. I prefer, 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 I prefer uniform sometimes um, for long sessions. There's a little less uh, like changes your finger have to make. Um, but so for this board that I'm building, I have a couple of let's see, I actually have a couple of really cool GM GMK sets that were part of group buys that finally came in. So for instance, I have Nautilus here, which just arrived. The Nautilus is Kind of these blues, blues and yellows. Um, I really love the alpha color here. The blue and blue looks super nice. I'm not as big of a fan of the yellows, but I love the alphas. I'm trying to think of how I can combine these alphas with potentially a different set. And then I also have, I can't reach it. Everything off camera is just an absolute disaster in this office right now, so it's a good thing you can't see it. So I also have, uh, well, this is what I was gonna build my sister's board with. This is um, this is uh, GMK Plum, which looks like this, which is kind of yellows, uh, like off-white and purple, um, and then has some um, alternate color and stuff. So this is what I was going to build on my sister's board, but the case for my sister's board got delayed in the group buy stage by like nine months. Um, it hasn't arrived yet. But the other one that I have for what I'm building is GMK Oblivion, which looks like this. And this is sort of, oops, oops this, out here. this is like a monochrome alphas, you know, gray and white, and then color in the, um, the uh, sp special key F, these words are escaping me. But anyway, these are the two that I have sitting right now, GMK wise. I also have a max key um, 
can't reach it easily now, but I have a max key essay set of Miami, is it called Miami Knights? I think it's the one that's black essay with neon pink and neon green or neon blue. Um, so I haven't tested that set. Um, I haven't even looked at it really to see if its quality is okay. Cause um, Max Key bought the molds for their essay sets from Signature Plastics, if I remember correctly. And I guess there were some quality issues, but from what I've heard, they've gotten better over time. I don't know that Miami is one of the better sets. Um, anyway, I got a lot of different options here. I would say GMK, if you're gonna do a custom build, and uh, it's your first build, I would, uh, I would consider buying a Switch starter pack from somebody to see which Switch you might like. Um, you know, if you're coming from, uh, if you're coming primarily from Apple keyboards, um, you may enjoy linears more. Uh, you might want to try like the Telios from Zeal PC um, or just kind of like the standards like uh, Cherry Red, Cherry Brown, etc. You can buy Cherry starter pack test kits um, and you can buy like, you know, little switch testers if you want to really go down that route and sort of screw with them first, see how they feel. Um, and then for the board itself, maybe try to pick a board that has feet, uh, like changeable or either removable. Usually these days it's removable feet, not so much like feet that pop down. Um, that's sort of like an older design style, but a lot of boards will come with, uh, with just feet that can be added and removed. Um, and you can start there and then, you know, if you don't, uh, similarly, if you don't like the idea of linear, or if you want to try something more fun, the Zelio switches are sort of like, <clears throat> you know, a favorite among tactile folks in the community. Uh, there's a bunch of switches coming out right now, uh, on the kale box series. Um, I have the box reds here. I don't like them, but I really love the box whites. Those are not linear. Those are um, clicky, but, and then I guess the Hako sets, different types are coming out soon too. So it's going to be like, it's weird. There's a lot of constant innovation and tech happening right now in a, such an insanely niche, uh, interest group. Maybe it's not as niche as I think it is, but it seems pretty niche. So it's always fascinating to me that like people are inventing new switch types all the time because um, you just wouldn't think from the outside that there would be enough demand for these custom switch types, but I guess there is. Uh, so yeah, this this whole Hako series, I, I've i heard there's just a bunch of them coming out. I saw somebody talking about Hako, I want to say Jades. Um, also at Zeal PC, he just launched a group buy for the uh, Xylance, I think is what they're called. Um, and those are Zelios, which are the tactile switches, but they have sound dampening, uh, bits in them. So they will be quieter. Um, I actually like the sound of Zelios, so I, I don't even know, but I, I did pre-order some of them just to try them out because they, they should feel roughly the same. And they kind of have, I think a lot of people are chasing the Topra sound, uh, which is like the HHKBs and stuff because that's that kind of like muted rubbery sound is really pleasant. Um, anyway, that was a really long winded answer. Sorry. Uh, but that's what my brain does when I'm doing something as like mind numbing as lubricating stabilizers. Um, normally I would just be talking to myself. So the fact that I am talking to myself, but that other people are listening makes it okay. That's pretty cool. Okay, I have one more to do after this and then we're done. Uh, let's put this in. It's hard to tell which, look at this Swiss cheese here. Like, well, it's really hard. I went to put these on and there's just, there's 56 holes here. Pretty sure it's that one that I need. There we go. Yeah, these screw and stabilizers are super nice. Um, I apologize for this music. It's really bad. So you don't want to have just silence in your stream because that's weird. But then if you want to have anything playing, you enter copyright infringement territory and content strikes and having your audio ducked whenever you upload to upload past broadcasts. 
So you basically have to pick uh, stuff like this, which is, this is coming from the NCS, the non-commercial, or whatever it's called. It's basically free music, and the only thing you have to do is credit it, which is why you see, where are you? You see, occasionally you'll see like a bug in this corner that tells you who the artist track album as if you care because this music is hot garbage but uh it's better than silence i think so let me tell you i i have to listen to my own voice in my head all day thinking about saying this sort of dumb stuff and with the silence it's much worse so enjoy this owl city-esque garbage i'm listening to it too if it makes you feel any better i have to hear it as well because i have to hear my own voice so i don't scream at you all right, last one. Yeah, I think the verdict for me on this little applicator for uh, for um, stabilizers is no good. For switches, it's great because you can you can hit spots really easily that are a little. I don't know. Maybe it's not good across the board. But I just can't find my little brush. I have like three of those little brushes, but I also have two little kids, so those brushes come and go. I've lost them, I've stolen more from them, and then I've lost those, so. All right. Let's get this in here. Ugh, I always, by the time I'm done with this process, I just have switch, I have this lubricant all over everything. Can't, I'm not sure if you can really see it, but it's all over this mat too, like little dots of it, which is kind of gross. All right. This. Okay, last one. Could run an entire live stream where I just talk about the lyrics of these awful songs. I'm trying to basically make sure I don't hear any of the words these people are saying in the songs because then I'll, I'll have a real problem. What the hell is going on here? Oh, there is, oh, that's unfortunate. This is the first time I've ever, it's the first time I've ever seen a stabilizer from Zeal that had an error inside of it. It's one of these uh, guys has an extra piece of plastic stuck in it. So that's not gonna work because it's gonna create annoying drag. So that's cool, I still have more. Let's see if this one, none of these others have it. Actually, this one has it too. Okay, hold on. Okay, am I just nuts? Is this normally in here and I've never hit it before with the wire? Okay, maybe it is. All right, let's try this again. I've never seen, there's like this tiny little piece of plastic. Oh, okay. I guess I've just never noticed it before. Interesting, okay. Well, then we can use this one, which of course I put right onto a paper towel and wiped all the lubricant off of it. Genius. All right, put this back in here. All right, that was the least fun part of this whole process. And I can tell because any single human being who came in here thinking, oh, maybe this is a stream I should watch, and then switched to seeing me lubricating s stabilizers was like, nah, I'm good. I don't need that, which is fair. That's very fair. Um, but we'll get to fun stuff in just a second here. Okay, last little bit on here. I'm gonna link to in the in the notes for this. I'll try to find the video. Actually, I guess it's kind of rude to link to someone's el someone else's video just for the purpose of saying hilarious how hilarious it is. But there is this video of somebody showing how to lube a keyboard that they use for gaming that has blue blue switches in it, which are clicky switches. Saying, "Oh, I don't like the sound of these, so here's how you can get rid of the click," and then proceeds to take the WASD switches out and just pour like a quart of what looks like pure oil all over the switches, just splashing it, spraying it everywhere, and then puts them back in and for sure dampens the clicking sound, but also just makes the grossest mess. And if it's real, and this person actually did this, it's really awful. If it was a joke, it was well done because it looked legit. It looked like this person was legitimately doing this and saying you should do this, but hopefully no one ever saw that and thought, oh, that's what you're supposed to do because it was real gross. Also, depending on the lubricant, you can get like, you know, collects dust and 
dirt and stuff, so if you aren't careful and you get too much lube in there, you're going to collect a bunch of garbage into your switches. All right. That is the stabilizers. So, we're good. Now, that should be it for prep. I can actually make a keyboard. Just make sure I tighten these without over tightening them. Which I'm always afraid at this stage I'm gonna break the PCB just by tightening these too much, but I also don't want them to become loose. Okay, done. Make sure they all move up and down, which appears to be the case. Okay, that's that. So, thankfully, nobody has to watch me lube 63 switches or 60 switches or whatever, because that would be awful. And that's gonna be a fun side project for something that pe human beings don't have to witness. Most lubing should take place in the privacy of your own home while you're alone. All right. I made it that far without making a dumbass lube joke, so it's not bad, considering. Don't need these, because we're not gonna take any other switches apart for now. And I was able to test this board the dumbest way possible, which is that the uh, holes for the switches are big enough that I can actually put, <clears throat> I can put the pandas in there and hold them tight against the edges, and I was able to test every single switch, uh, every single uh, spot, so I know the board works. Now, I just have to not destroy it while putting it together. So let's put these back away because we don't, don't need the other stabilizer. And now, I don't need this. And we're probably not going to need any of this. But we do need these two switches, or these two screws, because I took these out of the Tina case. Don't need this. All right. I've never actually soldered at this desk before, and I've certainly never soldered um, with an audience. I've never soldered at this angle. So forgive me if I do a poor job, but we're gonna give it a shot. So here's the plate. Make sure it all fits with those stabilizers. Good stuff. Okay. And where are all my switches? Right, and here they are on this. So let's just make sure we don't forget anything. All the stabilizers are on, they were all band-aided. That's all I gotta do before I do that. This fits, fits in the case, I tested that. Don't wanna poke myself with these. Okay, let's turn on the insanely hot burning tool and try to melt something. And you know what, I'm also gonna pop a window open, so hold on one second. Uh, normally I do this uh, in the bathroom that's off my office because that's a really big counter space and I can run the fan, but I'm going to do it in the office, so if I black out while doing this and, you know, call for help, I don't know. Um, okay. Let's pull some. The one dumb thing is putting these all in here means i got to pop them all out, which is like uh, silly. Silly extra step. Oh, and I put keycaps on them like an idiot to test them and never took them off. So that's fine. We should have enough to start here. So the thing I'm not quite sure about, but I hope is the case, is these panda switches have effectively have hole tights on their legs. And I'm hoping that once I solder these in, I may actually be able to pop the switches off and leave the little hole tights in. I don't know. I've heard that's the case, but when I tested yesterday, it didn't really seem like that would work. All right, let's start with the upper corner. I usually try to start with the corners, which I think most people try to start with the corners. It's most, don't just stick one in the middle. Boy, holy moly. That's a tight fitting shimmy. There we go. Oh, that's good. At least it's gonna hold. So I think I talked about this on the last stream, but um, one of the things that bothers me is uh, not all the switches have the same PCB foot. Um, and so sometimes they don't sit tight in the PCB when you're soldering and I don't want them to be crooked. But the nice thing is this uh, plate is extremely 
has like no tolerance at all. So they're snapping in extremely tight. So they're actually going to sit real straight, which is super cool. All right. Let's just make sure that lines up. And it does. Awesome. Okay. So the nice thing is because these are so tight and because the tolerance is so little, I can actually if I can get them in. Jesus. I'm going to break my fingers here. Oh, my God. Boy. Oh, man. Okay. I'm going to have to go. I'm going to have to do this without going one side in first because that's causing me to not be able to get the other side in to try to go straight down. There we go. Yeah, that's better. Is there any... There's no tolerance at all left and right. That's great. That makes this way better. So let's go... These here... I'm just going to try to go in the spots nearest... Nearest to the stabilizers and the stabilizer... Oof. The stabilizer spots. One thing I don't like about making keyboards is I... So I, I spend my days building keyboards, sure, but primarily my... Uh, work is typing on a keyboard, which does not require any, um, you know, I'm not a hard working hands person. Um, so I have like, you know, baby fingers, basically. They, they, like, this kind of stuff hurts my hands doing this. Like pushing these switches in hurts my hand, hurts my fingers. Um, like I'll, I'll come out of making a keyboard with very sore fingertips, which sounds stupid, but it's just, it's a lot of sharp little plastic edges that you're really digging into your skin. There we go. And I see little pieces of plastic flying off, which is great, but it's actually the the little legs on the sides of these um, switches are just getting trimmed as they go in because the tolerance is so low. Okay, so let's see. Those two, I'll try to move my work a little more forward. I keep forgetting that this camera is pushed forward. Okay, so that stabilizer next to it, next to it, that stabilizer, that stabilizer, and let's put the space bar one in. Now I was a little nervous to use this switch for the space because it's so rough, and I may regret this and have to desolder and remove. Of course, if I have to remove one of these switches while the rest are soldered, I'm gonna be really stuck because this is a real tight fit. I kind of feel like I should be wearing goggles for this. These little pieces of plastic are just flying off into my face. Ouch. Okay, yeah, like, that may make for a bad space key interaction but we'll see okay and i'm not doing the uh so standard hhkb style would be two keys here uh because hhkb puts its backspace where normally on the um us ANSI layout is the uh backslash but i use too many other keyboards to get used to using this as a backspace so i've stuck with a standard backspace so i'll do a standard width backspace key or delete key here. Um, so I'm putting that in the middle, which is also why I put a stabilizer there because I wouldn't have needed one if, if that were the case. And this makes my life pretty easy because these all fit in real well. Um, there's there's not a lot of uh, work here to get this to work, which is super cool. Sometimes I've had problems in this stage just getting things to sit flush. Ooh, let's see. Um, yeah, those all just sit real, real well. So we're gonna test is I'm going to try soldering. Well, let's put one in the middle just so I have an even weight here that I can push down on the board without worrying about flexing the middle. Also important to put these all in the correct way. I've definitely accidentally put in switches upside down before. Some switches are have to go in upside down because their actual case design or the housing design is what I would call backward, but what's some may not. Okay, here we go. Let's put this on here. Good. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna push down real hard, and I'm gonna solder the corners first, and then I'm gonna test the stabilizers with actual keycaps to make sure that they work. So let's turn on the, let's bring this over here. Let's turn on this guy, make sure I don't blow a fuse. Creeps me out how fast, uh, how fast a soldering iron can get up to 555 degrees. Like it takes seven seconds for this thing to get up to that hot. Actually, this is the longest it's taken, which was about 15 seconds. Normally, it's it's very quick. So I do I 
I knew nothing about soldering coming into soldering. So I just read like, what's a good temperature for soldering for this sort of application? And the answer was somewhere around 500 to 550, uh, or sorry, somewhere around 550. And so at some point, for some reason, my solder got set to 555 um, because it's got kind of an arcane way that you have to change the temperature. So I just left it there. So that's what it is, 555. I've never had a problem. I've never um, melted anything or done anything that made me think there was an issue. So, and I'm using, um, I don't know, solder. <laughs> I don't know enough about, I forget. I ordered it from Amazon. It's, I, it has lead in it, I think. Uh, I don't really know how this works, but let's just go ahead and solder something. So, so there's a little flex in here, but. Let's just give it a shot. Oh, actually, let me just make sure this tip is not. Okay. There's a word for that. I don't remember what it is. Just making sure that it's not a little bit. I'm not very good at cleaning my soldering iron between uses, which I can get better at. So this is what I was describing. This, these first ones are a little bit annoying because I gotta get, I gotta push real hard when I'm soldering, and this is. Just, it's difficult to do that while, while soldering, but then once I'm, once I get one, I don't have to push nearly as hard. It's mostly just making sure the very first time that I get a good, listen, I can't really see what I'm doing from this angle, which is super cool. Normally I get my face way closer. So I apologize if I get some bad solders here. Okay. So let's just make sure those look flush. I try not to touch myself in the eye with this as well. That probably looked closer than it was on camera, but it's a good idea not to touch yourself in the eye with a soldering iron. I think that would probably be the end of your eye. Okay. So I don't, I'm not actually, I'm kind of excited about this because normally at this stage, I'm much more worried about, um, about how the switches are sitting on the PCB after soldering. And it's not really a concern right now. God, this thing is, this thing is uh, spaghetti, not spaghetti, this is uh, just disgusting how many holes there are here. And I'm trying not to touch any pads that I don't want to touch with the solder, but it's kind of insane. Let's put a little bit more pressure on this one because I'll make sure we get it in there. Oh, I hate this part of soldering because having to put this much downward pressure makes it real hard to actually solder. Okay. I'll just hit this one one more because I kind of touched it in a weird way. Okay, I'll come back to that. It's a little bit of an ugly solder there, but it'll work. Um, which ones didn't I do? Other oh, space. The board has quite a bit of flex when it doesn't have switches in every spot, so I just don't want to break it. But one thing I need to get better at I consider myself a pretty good solderer in general. Like I do pretty clean soldering, especially when I compare it to like things I've looked at on Reddit and stuff of people, you know, people saying like, look at this solder job and I look at it and I go, okay, I guess I'm, I'm doing an okay job because that looks pretty good to me and people here are saying that looks pretty good. Um, but one thing that I do think I struggle with is I get too much solder into the channel between the leg of the switch and the PCB and that can make desoldering really difficult. Um, because it's hard to get enough suction on the desolder to get it out of the whole channel. And so often what'll happen is I'll pull the solder off the, the visible solder off the PCB, but then I actually still can't pull the switch out because there's solder in the channel. And I think I'm probably just filling too much as I go. So something to, to practice probably, or just doing this more is can probably, I'm hopefully getting better at it each time. I don't know. Uh, so this is the last one here. There we go. Okay. So I think I hit one on each. Let's see. One on that guy. Try to lean into this. One on that guy. One on that guy. One on that guy. One on that guy. Um, yep. And yep. Yep. Okay. So now I don't have to put any pressure on, so I can actually just get through these guys. One nice thing about soldering that I found that I really appreciate is that solder is like instant, really good glue. It's one of the few things that 
as you're doing it, it makes the job easier just by doing it. So like once you get a little one part of it soldered, the rest of it is kind of holding real tight. God, there is no clearance near this USB port, Jesus. Hmm, trying to think of the best angle for this switch. Boy, oh boy. You gotta do it overhand, like Barack Obama signs his signature like this. I'm a lefty, but I don't do that usually. I just drag my arm through the ink because I don't care. Okay. So this was the one that... Not, not a pretty... Whenever you get near the Swiss cheese, I tend to do worse solders because I'm so nervous about touching... When the pads are that close to each other, I don't want to cause the wrong pads to get activated there, so I'm always really nervous. So I tend to do smaller solders there. Okay, I fixed it, so that's good. Okay. Cool. So somebody asked me last time, you know, do you have to be good at soldering to make a keyboard? And I, I commented, my wife asked me after the stream, did anybody ask you any questions? And I said, somebody asked me if you have to be good at soldering. And I said, no, you don't have to be good at it. And I think that's true, you don't have to be good at it. You just have to know how to do it. And it's way easier than it appears. And um, it's fun, honestly. So if, if soldering was the thing that was keeping people from making keyboards, like I'd recommend just ignoring that impulse, buying a cheap soldering iron and just doing it because it's, it's really fun. And it's really not, it's not nearly as hard as it, it may seem. And also there's a, there are a lot of great practice things you could do with soldering. Like uh, Amazon sells a bunch of practice kits you could buy that are, you know, like eight bucks or whatever. And they're just little, little PCBs with, um, Simple, simple stuff like a switch that turns an LED on and off, and you solder the LED and solder the switch, and it, um, it's really easy to practice. So I would recommend that. Okay, so those look pretty good. Let's test these stabilizers. <clears throat> so let's put some. What do we need? Backspace. Let's put a backspace key on here. This is very important because if they don't. Uh, move up and down smoothly. This is the best time to fix them before you do the whole board. That one feels pretty good. Okay. Come off. The Come. Let's do return. Cannibalizing this crummy board that I'm not actually using, but I should have pre preemptively taken these parts off. that one we need space or we need a shift and I need to grab a seven use space Test that one, but let's try this all right left shift good return good no problems that is a good sign okay let's take these off those are good, and I need to grab a 7U spacebar. I thought I had one out here, but I don't see it, so I'm just gonna have to open a new one. Jesus, what is that? Is that 7U or 725? I didn't even know that was a thing. Windows Defender Antivirus did not find any threats. That's good. My 7U space. It's gotta be one of these. Let's open this. No, it does not look like 7. Is that 7? No. It is, the, is it this one? This looks huge. I've actually never made a 7U space keyboard before. Normally with the HHKBs that I actually have, those are 6. Oh, what is this one? Oh wait, that's not right, is that right? That's right, okay. Boy, that's a big ass space for home. Jeez, space for days. Okay, so. Let's 
Boy, that is still a little rattly. That's just such a big space bar. Hmm. Let's try something. I want to see what this sounds like in the case because now's the time to repair. Now's the time to change this if this needs to be changed. Once I go all in on the switches, that's a much worse situation. So I'm going to try screwing this in. I hate non magnetic screws. God. I have a little magnetizer, I should do that, because this is awful. Okay, yeah. Oops. All right, I know what, I have to put two in here to really feel what this feels like. So let's do, ugh. Come on. Non-magnetic screws are the worst. Come on, go into the right spot there. <laughs> you bastard. I can't see you. Just... No. Okay. This needs to go over just a little, and let's put this on. This is a pretty good approximation of what this will actually feel like when it's put together. That's pretty loud. Boy, it's just such a big, it's such a big space bar. Like, I'm not sure there's much I could do about that. You know? Like, I could, technically I could, so one thing I could do is band-aid that entire space or even craft foam that whole space. See if I can kill a little bit of the, a little bit of the sound, but I'm not sure it's gonna get better than that, which is unfortunate, because um, that's pretty loud. Let's see, where's that other board? Like comparatively, it's a very different sound, but. All right, well, I'm not sure there's much I could do about that. So, I could try putting foam in the gap to deaden that sound, but I actually don't know that it's gonna make a difference. Um, so, I, it's the stabilizers are not the problem. So, that's a good sign. That means I can proceed. Uh, worst case, I may have to, all oh, right. <laughs> I may have to come back to this spot on this board and maybe switch the switch later for a, a linear, maybe, or even a silent. That might work. It's a little weird, potentially. God, it's a little weird, potentially, to have a silent for the space bar, but clicky, tactile, loud, or well, not clicky, but tactile, loud switches everywhere else. I, that might be weird. If I get this, come here. Um, I, building customs, I always the space bar is the worst part for, to me. I, I, it's very rare to find a space bar that I like the sound and feel of. Um, and actually, the the ones on my box white boards are the ones I like the most, primarily because they're already clicking like hell. So you don't, it's not as noticeable. Um, whereas on this, I think it's a little too noticeable. But let's proceed and build a keyboard otherwise this seems fun and why not why not why not solder the rest of this thing oh well actually okay so now i just realized something this is this is what building a keyboard is all about so what i realized is i was having a really hard time putting those switches in those and now i've got to put them in with no ability to get behind the thing so this might be really difficult Let's find out. Let's try to put these in here because now I'm afraid I'm not going to have the leverage to get them in. Oh boy. Oh boy. Yeah. Wow. Oh, damn. There's just absolutely no. There's no room for key cat or key switches in this plate. This plate is like. I wonder if I start the other way. I'm starting to think that it's those bottom feet. Switches have two little bottom feet. No, it's hard to see there, but 
The bottom feet are the ones that keep getting snapped off whenever I do this. So I'm wondering if I go in bottom first, then top, I might have more luck. Jeez. Okay. Boy. Now I'm, now I'm, now I'm in one of those classic situations where I'm not sure the best way to do this because I can't get leverage. And I'm thinking I should have put every single switch in. So normally my plates aren't nearly this tight. And so I can put every single, or I put just the corners in, verify everything, then put every single other switch in and I'm good. Uh, now, <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna be able to get these switches in like across the board to the whole PCB without breaking something. Cause it's just, there's just no. Oh, okay, maybe I, okay. So if I do go in bottom first, maybe I was right. Let's try this again. Bottom first, as long as I don't break the legs off. Let's try to lean forwards, actually. A lot of my time making keyboards is spent thinking, am I about to break something? And then hoping it doesn't happen. Okay, that's actually not that bad. If I... This top row, I think is gonna be the easiest though, because the bottom ones, I'm gonna have no way to get my fingers under it like I am here. Whoa, jeez, that is really difficult to get in there. And then it's also difficult to see if I've actually got the switch. Man, that's not too bad. Lesson learned. Next time, next time the fit is that tight, on the plate, do all the switches into the plate first. Definitely, definitely, because this is insane. Because I'm actually like, it's so tight I'm pulling the plate off the other switches as I do this, which is no good. Boy, okay, I'm, I'm mentally thinking would this be better to desolder five switches so that I could power through all the switches or to try to force 58 more switches through this plate? Because as I'm doing this, I'm nervous that I'm gonna de-seat the switches as I do this, because I just can't, I simply can't get this switch. This one, for instance, I cannot get into this at all. Let's try it again. And I am sort of, slightly deseating the other ones and I'm afraid I'm gonna do some damage if I'm not careful. Let's take this one out. Try it. The problem with do doing bottom in is that the legs don't get into the PCB until the top is closer to in and then the top fits in easily so it's hard to get leverage on just the bottom. God, maybe it's just this one housing that's just not going to fit. Let me try a different one. Let's grab a few of them. Come on, don't touch the soldering iron, please. Thank you. Okay, let's try this one. Hmm. Boy, oh boy. There we go. Okay, it was just that one switch. All right, making progress now. I think actually, hoping if I can get enough of these in, then the plate will stop slipping because it'll be so held by enough of these. I'm also wondering if I can push these feet in you know, just a little to get them. Yeah, hey, I can, okay. Maybe that'll make this way easier. Let's try that. Get this in and then get, there we go. Okay, see, like everything else, just about figuring out the better way to do it. I feel like that's a constant thing for me in this hobby. It's just not knowing the best way to go about it. And now, of course, I'm having no trouble at all because a little bit of thought goes a long way. Jeez. Okay, well, that was fun. I'm glad you got to watch me try to figure out how to do something very simple. Um, now we're, now I'm less concerned. I'm not sweating as much.
I really didn't want to spend the next 15 minutes desoldering the things I already soldered. That's always a pain. Unless you're doing it because it's an absolute must. Okay. I'm trying not to lose those screws over there. No guarantees. Okay. It's kind of silly how long that took me to realize that if I just put a little bit of pressure on those two little legs that it would that they would just go right in. Yep. Okay. And also they're not breaking off, which is a separate benefit. Because they're so tight that when I was pushing them in before, I, like my desk is littered with little plastic feet, which I'm now throwing on the ground. So that's good. Okay. Top rows in. Good. Now, unfortunately, I have to quickly pull these apart. Anyways, this is another GMK switch, or uh, GMK cap set here. Um, this is Yuri, which has some super cool Russian legends as well. But then, you know, I bought them because my wife is Russian, and I also just thought they looked neat because it's pretty rare these days to have. Uh, alternate legends like that in GMK didn't have a lot of alternate legends and then you know the whole Russian hacking and I don't know Russian stuff seems way less cool these days literal Russian stuff my wife's still cool but I just didn't know if I wanted to really have a Russian keyboard at this stage so haven't put those on alright let's do the next row here well the two of you that are still here Thanks. So this is probably not the most exciting part of this, is putting switches in. I'm also realizing that one of those two people might be me because of the chat window that I have open. So if that's the case, then there's only one of you. So thanks for being here. One person who I don't know who you are. You can say hi if you want, or you can stay anonymous. It's all good. Oh, what the hell was that? That one didn't have any resistance, which is a little strange. Alright. Music. Really something else. Reminds me of the Horse eBooks Twitter account, but for music. Like someone just ran a set of metaphors, similes, and a dictionary set of annoying words skewed to a certain type of person through an algorithm and then an auto tuner on a Siri voice, and this music was generated. I really wish NCS had an option for no lyrics music only. They currently do not. Okay. Um, hey, go in there. What are you doing? There we go. Cool. Getting there. We're getting there. There's no glamour in this hobby. There's no glamour at all. Well, there is glamour. Basically, you go through all this nonsense, and then you program the keyboard, and then you put it on an interesting background and you take high bokeh photography of it, post it to Reddit, get a tiny bit of karma, feel good about yourself for a few minutes, and then start thinking, what do I build next? And that's the hobby across the board. So, maybe it's worth it. They're fun to type on, at least for a while. Okay, next set. And then I have to solder a billion switches. And I don't look forward to the lubing thing, because getting these tops off, these switch tops off, is going to be a real pain in my ass. I think I'm not even exactly sure how I'm going to do it precisely yet. I think I'm going to have to pull apart some binder clips and flatten their edges a little bit to see if I can get them to fit through the spots, through these slots, I should say. sure I put this one in the right spot because I do not want it. Should I have to come back to that switch. The 
what should be caps lock, but what I always switch to control key needs to be in the right spot on this because I'm not using a stepped switch or cap. Uh, I guess I could use a switch cap. Almost every single set that I buy these days has a uh, stepped cap. That's the one where the caps lock is like square on one edge and slightly flat on the other, which is pretty common, I think, definitely on older keyboards and also an ISO, I think, uses stepped by default, but uh, it's not as common on mechanical keyboards. It's more of an option. And actually, to me, it doesn't provide much of a benefit because I, I don't use caps lock, I use control, so that it's less uh, upsetting if it gets bumped. Which reminds me, one of the things about these switches, um, they're not very forgiving. When I was screwing around with the <laughs> Hi. When I was screwing around with the uh, this little test set of these switches, I noticed that the way that the switches actuate and how hard they are and how quickly they bought and how the bottom out and everything, they they don't really forgive missing or partially tapping a key on its edge. So it's gonna be an interesting thing to see in practice how they actually feel when I'm trying to type for real. Because I'm a little nervous about that. Uh, I'm not like a super sloppy typist, but I can be here and there. And if this makes that much harder, I don't know. I'm curious to see how that impacts day-to-day -day use. Make sure all these legs are coming through. Okay, almost done. Let's see here. Jeez, sorry, six o'clock. This is the other thing about building a keyboard. It's like time just melts away because everything takes forever. You know, you gotta do everything 62 to 60 times. So, these tiny actions that only take a split second, they add up so fast. Okay. A few more, and then it's all Solder City here. Actually, it'd be easier if I just pull the whole thing out. Try really hard not to touch that soldering iron. So I, I have come real close to it several times now where I can feel the heat on my arm. So let's try not to burn myself. Burned myself three times so far on a soldering iron, soldering iron, and every time the three times were not great. Not great at all. And every single time it was because I wasn't looking when I was holding it like an idiot. Okay, here we go, last row. I won't try to get in my pants. of my thumbs are going to be real sore after this. Oh. Stay. Sharp end, please. Okay. That one. Boy, if I have to, if I have to replace a switch on this thing, I don't know how on earth I'm gonna get it out. Cause this is one of the tightest fitting plates I have ever interacted with. I guess it's better than the opposite where it's so loose that the keys, that the, cap, the switches float around, but this is intense on how tight this is. I'm, I'm a little afraid I wouldn't actually be able to get a switch out of here without damaging it, but go in there, go in there. I'll actually go in. Yes, okay. Okay. Oops, missed one down here. Oh, I missed two here. Not sure how that happened. Okay, these have to go into the right holes there. There we go. Go! You got it. This one. That's gonna be real close to the edge of the case. Okay, and there's no, so this is one downside of the HHKB layout's plate is there's no, I can't put any pressure on this spot because there's no counter pressure. 
Especially now with their switch here. This one's gonna be a little hard to get in. Oh, there we go. That's not too bad. Is it flush? Cool. Okay. Now I just have to test this uh, control key to make sure that I put the right uh, position of the two options here. I'm gonna do non-stepped, just in case. Okay, oops, it's upside down. Okay, so that's gotta be Where are you? There you are, okay, so it's the right one, right? Gotta be the right one, yep. Gotta be the right one, okay. Our goal would be to not lose all these keycaps I keep throwing around my desk, right, no guarantees. Okay, make sure that goes in the right spot, it is. Get in there without breaking anything, and good. Cool, that's it. Switches in. They look pretty even, honestly, without even having to do anything, any pressure on them. And this plate is holding them so tightly that I don't even actually think I'm gonna have to put pressure on them when I solder, which is super cool because that means I can casually solder the whole board without really worrying about too much. Okay, let's do it. At like 52, sounds about, I don't know, let's see. Let's see how fast this goes. I'm gonna put a little pressure legs don't heat up as fast, which is interesting. These panda switches with their little hole tight covers don't heat up as fast. I don't know what that means. I don't know if that's a pro or a con. So I don't really know enough about that kind of thing. There we go. I think the smell of solder is probably as bad for you as the smell of gasoline, but just like the smell of gasoline, it's a nice, I like the smell. I know some people don't like that smell of gasoline. I drive electric cars now, so I haven't been to a gas station in a while, but I still like that smell. But I know it's bad for you, and I know most people don't like that smell. So the nice thing about soldering is once you get used to it, it goes pretty quick. Now, you know, I could be doing this. I'm realizing with the close-up camera on. Let's try that. Where's my mouse? Hello. Uh, let's see. Let's just try to make this a little more. Where are you, focus controls? There you are. somewhat what I'm doing here. Kind of. Uh, get a little closer. This is a very unnatural position to be soldering in. Hello. There we go. In this lighting, it's very difficult to see Sometimes it looks like I didn't even finish the solder, but it's just so reflective in this light that it's hard to talk. Okay. So I think based on um, not needing to pressure these, or put pressure on these, I'm just gonna do one in each row that holds the plate and that hopefully holds everything in the right spot, and then not worry about pressure for the rest. Because it honestly doesn't seem to, it's not seeming to make a difference here. And they sit so square in this plate that I actually am not worried about. Uh, I'm not worried about any rotation issues, I don't think. I think keys are going to look pretty straight. And if they don't, I actually don't really have much I can do because of how tight the plate is. 
let's just put one in each row if it's nice held down. And then let's just go back and do all these solders. Come here. I'm realizing that close up is too, probably too overblown for you to see detail just because of the way the lights work in this space right now, but. Come here. These are a little weird to solder too because they're so round, they actually create, uh, kind of automatically create nice solder joints unlike normally keycaps or key switches, uh, the legs are flat. And so they, they can cause kind of like really flat looking uh, solder joint. But this is creating nice, very classic pyramids here, which is I think what you're meant to aim for. Usually what I do here is I do a panic test when I'm like half quarter, halfway through, I'll then plug the board in, make sure the keys that I've soldered so far work and that I didn't do something really bad because I don't want to waste my time if I did. I've so far not had one of those where I plug it in and go like, whoops, none of it works. So I guess it's a good sign. Almost done with the first row. much solder on that one. Let's see if I can pull some of that off. Perfectionism everywhere if possible. And if not, just tell everybody it's perfect because they're never going to see these anyway. Okay, so that's row one. You can see these solders here. Maybe you can't. They're pretty good. They're not bad. Not bad at all. I think if I, the way that I try to think about uh, how the solder should look when I'm done is whether or not if I sold this board to someone, if they looked at the board and thought, that's a good job. That's what I'm hoping for. Like it's never gonna look like a machine did it, obviously. Um, and it's never gonna look like somebody who has soldered for 20 years did it. But as long as they look at it and go like, that's good soldering, then I'm, then I'm happy. That's all I'm hoping for. And I definitely, if I go back to my first board, if you were to look at, if I was to sell my first board, the person who got that board would be like, what the hell happened here? What were they doing? Cause I like melted parts of the PCB because I held it for too long. Or like some of my solders have like three gallons of solder on them. Uh, I just I, I wasn't adept yet with how long to hold and how much solder to feed in. I've gotten much better at that over time. It's just practice more than anything. And also having to desolder and resolder boards kind of teaches you a little bit. Like don't hey don't have you know 200 pounds of solder in each joint because then you're gonna have to try to get that all out when you desolder. So. I can hear my children now. I hear them arguing. You can probably hear them too, because this microphone is set to very high sensitivity. <laughs> I think they're arguing in my son's room next door to the office. Okay. Let's test it. Because I want to make sure I'm on the right track here. So, let's plug this bastard in. LEDs still work. That's good. I didn't I didn't kill it. So that's always a good sign. And let me just open up a window here on my Mac, which you're not gonna be able to see, but let's just type a few keys. And we have working keys, so that is great. Cool. No issues on any of the keys that I just soldered. So that that's very good. Alright. Oh, that's the keyboard's not plugged in, is it? All right. All right. 
let's see. How long have we been going here? How long has this thing been on? It's like almost, what is that, an hour and a half? Two hours? Oh boy. Long one. Okay. Well. What I'm going to do, I think, is I'm going to pause here. Because I made a bunch of progress. I'm going to go feed my kids dinner. And then I'm going to come back tonight and stream again and finish this thing. So I really appreciate you sticking around and watching this. Um, and I will uh, try to stream again tonight and finish this board up because I only got about, I'd say about a half an hour more work finishing the solders, putting it in the case and testing it out and then I'll have a functional keyboard. So thank you very much uh, for tuning in and um, I will tweet again. Hopefully tonight we'll, we'll finish this board if, if that works out. So thanks. Bye.